Green Team Academy podcast, episode 64, International Coastal Cleanup Day, which is this year, September 21st, 2019. And we're talking with Dan Diaz, the CEO and founder of Sustainable Energy and Enterprise Development for Communities in the Philippines. Hey, are you ready to make a positive impact for the planet? If so, then you're in the right place. My name is Joan Gregerson, and I am an eco-nut. Thanks for joining me today, and don't forget to head over to the greenteamacademy.com website to pick up plenty of other resources to help you on your way. And with that, let's get started. Hey, green team, what's up? Oh my goodness, this is going to be a really fun one. I'm up early in the morning doing this recording, but it's actually late in the evening in the Philippines, in Cebu, where I've got Dan Diaz. And I spoke with Dan, you may remember, he was part of the Earth Week Summit, the 2019 Earth Week Summit, talking about all the cool things that uh, that his NGO, his nonprofit is doing in the Philippines. His, the name of that is the um, Sustainable Energy and Enterprise for Communities. It goes for short, Seed for Calm. So he's the founder and executive director of that. But today, um, just a couple days ago, uh, Dan reached out and said, hey, we've got this international cleanup day happening and it's something we're doing in the Philippines but people around the world could do and so I was like yeah let's definitely get that information out to folks so that happens on September 21st and so with that I just want to um, say hey there Dan and thanks so much for joining us today. Yes uh, Joanne good uh, evening here in the Philippines and Hello, Green Team uh, patrons and Green Team uh, members and family worldwide. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And um, yeah, so why don't you go ahead and start? We're, we're going to be talking about this International Cleanup Day that happens on September 21st or the third Saturday of every September. Um, but Dan, tell us a little bit about why why we need to be cleaning up the oceans. I mean, all of us have heard little bits and pieces of this, um, but the Philippines, you're living right on the ocean. I'm in Colorado, the middle of the country. So a little bit, I know it's an issue, but a little bit more removed. So um, tell us a little bit about why we need to be cleaning the oceans. All right. So thank you for that uh, introductory questions, you know, why the oceans? Because uh, our planet, our Mother Earth, is more than 70% water. And we already know that um, whatever uh, we throw or we dispose, even from the top of the Colorado Hills, through the melting of ice, it goes through our waterways and it ends up all through the ocean. So no matter how small or big but it takes time to reach uh, the ocean you know and we have been affected by um, the uh, marine debris or ocean litters you know um, not just the solid waste but even as far as the liquid uh, waste is concerned you know but for the past 15, 50 years when plastic was introduced for convenience for um, packaging uh, we haven't had seen uh, greater visibility on the problems of plastic on the ocean. It, it only happened, I think, over three years ago that the world was really um, looking at uh, marine litter and the ocean gyres, you know, the discovery of this garbage patch in five uh in all over the planet, you know? So, so going back, why the ocean? Because the ocean is our connection through all of the countries. We are, we are shielded with the ocean and the ocean provides us with 80% oxygen as well as uh, um, source of our food. And 
it 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 brings out bridging uh connectivity through la- through water through 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 a different archipelago so why the ocean we have to clean because in the first place it's basically our water and we know water is life and we have to take care and protect it yeah that's a very interesting um concept that how wonderful is it i know that in the waters there are certain areas that are designated for certain countries to have fishing rights and all that stuff but really when we think about the borders as you're just kind of alluding to like the borders stop at the land Mm -hmm. and once we're getting out into the oceans it does really remind us that we are on a shared planet that we are all connected and whatever we do harm to to you know to the land it boils down to to our waterways and and through evaporation it condenses it's the the cycle you know and and it's very interesting to take a look at how precious water how precious life underwater on the sustainable development goals they always say life on land and life underwater and and if we were those mermaids <laughs> or the fishes you know who's going to protect us you know and it's about time to to reconsider um the threats not not necessarily the threat the crisis now the greater problem on on marine litter and plastic pollution Okay, so um, yeah, so let's just dive right in and tell us about the um, International Cleanup Day, the National Cleanup Day as it's happening in in the Philippines, um, because I I really like this because this is something that a lot of people, uh, especially you know if you're coastal, this is something that you could be organizing for your community is a cleanup day and i know you have a ton of experience doing this so this would this is would be really great to hear how how you set that up yeah so um the there is a organization in the u.s called ocean conservancy and you can go to their website oceanconservancy.org basically they were the first um organization worldwide to to organize this uh, call for action to do a cleanup on the coastal. So they call it the coastal cleanup. And eventually this uh, initiative of coastal cleanup becomes international because there are definitely yachting groups, you know, who, who loves the ocean and even surfers, they are also cleaning up the beach because they're surfing already, not with fishes, but with uh, litters, you know. They're paddling the water, and instead of water, they're paddling with litters on the oceans, you know. So it becomes a, a worldwide uh, movement. And here in the Philippines, uh, the International Coastal Cleanup started in 1993. 1993. And uh, its uh, conveners were the Department of Environment and Natural Resources uh, um, Biodiversity Management Bureau, because how it affects biodiversity, you know, there are many um, um, underwater and species, corals, etc., under under our uh, ocean and many habitats. So it's it's a protection for biodiversity. And then there is this Philippine Coast Guard Auxiliary. So this Philippine Coast Guard, they, they make sure not only they take care of the territory on water for, for uh, security or threat, but they also uh, cleaning up the marine environment. So those were the two uh, institutions. And what's important was that these are led by volunteers of people, all walks of life, families, not paid to, to do this cleanup action. And, and this movement has been growing and growing. And here in the Philippines, we are top contributors of volunteers during the International Coastal Cleanup Day, this coming 
um, September uh, 21. Uh, that's a uh, third Saturday of each uh, year of September, you know. And uh, oh, what is what are you saying there? You're saying the Philippines, uh, a pretty small country. Mm -hmm. is the top contributor of volunteers so yes. that's a challenge that's a yeah. challenge to all of us in all the other countries yeah. uh around the world to to step up and yeah. uh and and bring that kind of that kind of response that the philippines is bringing and also um in this uh a cleanup since 1993 it's been growing uh, companies, you know, um, contact us through our Facebook. They want to participate in the cleanup. They want to bring in their staff, maybe few staff to a designated area, mostly in the coastal. Here in, in the Philippines, they go to Manila Bay. Now, Manila Bay is uh, very historic and a good sunset view if you go to Luzon. But remember that the Philippines is over like 7,600 islands. So we are an uh, archipelagic country and, you know, um, with two, two, two monsoons, the, the, the litter are just being, you know, um, swayed either to the, to the left or to the right. So, so we really have to uh, take action uh, as a national level because a lot of information still have to be instill in the hearts and mind of individual not to to just dispose their waste illegally so so looking at sdg on responsible consumption and production but proper disposal and sdg is the sustainable development goals of the un which was started in 2016 so if you try to connect with my ngo it started in 2014 after that strong typhoon Haiyan where the islands don't have power. So, and we introduced the program on energy through renewable and the come up with the name was the SD sustainable development. So it's part of the organization's uh, thrust, the SDGs and, and for the communities are really island and mountain communities. So, for, for in the case of the USA in Colorado, so it might be too far for you just to go to the coastal. But what we did last five years ago with our movement, um, we, we banner the National Cleanup Day. So in partnership with the Department of Energy and Natural Resources, it's like the Ministry of Environment here in our country. So we come up with the idea like, we have this law on solid waste management the Republic Act 9003, and we provide the training and grassroots volunteers all over the country to do the segregation and source and to reach out to organize local cleanups, grassroots in their own locality. And it was started five years that we tell them we don't have to go to the ocean or the coastal we go where we are in our own community, find those uh, areas that are um, neglected, that people just throw, dispose improperly or illegally. And then we organize, clean it up and keep it, keep it clean. And, and that's how basic it is, but it's difficult sometimes and frustrating because the next day or the next week you can see that there's still uh, litters uh, are still there, you know. So, but this cleanup movement, even here in the country, is a celebration. It becomes uh, people get aware. We will be in the news, like in the media, in TV, like groups and hundreds or millions of people are, are going out and doing collective massive action to solve this problem. So it creates awareness level. And the next step is, you know, what, what we can do. So Okay, well, let's, yeah, let's, yeah, let's talk about that, that next. But I think what you're hitting on are some really important things. So um, number one, a lot of people say, I can't get people interested. Nobody in my community cares. And I think what, what Dan is talking about is that you have to understand 
human psychology uh, mm. that, you know, people, there's certain things that feel good and that are exciting and things that, that media will cover. And so having something very visible, like a bunch of people out there with trash bags, and we're going to talk also about what you do with the things that you collect, um, but realizing that that is, that is a way to engage people rather than saying we're having a meeting come sit in this room that that is a that's a nice follow up but sometimes you need to do something that's more active more visible and then the other thing that Dan was talking about was this thing of clean up where you are and i i just heard one of the sustainable neighborhoods was saying this is an entryway project for any team that's getting together is have a cleanup first mm -hmm. and then you get people out there. It's not a high skill thing. You know, anybody can do it. And then once you start talking, it's a place where you can start talking with each other about your dreams and visions and move to that next level. And yeah. so Dan, the things that people clean up, how do you, what, what happens to those? Yeah, right. So uh, um, before there were like uh, just doing cleanups and it's a matter of transporting those uh, waste and trash to the landfill you now here in the country. So we don't want that to happen to fill up the landfill immediately. So the idea here is uh, we've come up with a system for the past five years like each community will, before they clean up, they do what we call this uh, waste mapping. So you have to, to gather, let's say, five people with their phones or camera and then do uh, an ocular and take pictures of where are those places that are so much of litter. And then you can, you can use, there are a lot of um, mobile app for free that you can download. You can just search waste mapping. There's so many that you can use. But here in the Philippines, uh, we have uh, been trying to come up with our own. So we're still looking for a partner and funding to really have our own um, waste mapping tool. But for now, we're just taking pictures, geotag, and basically know the quantity of trash and the types of trash or waste that are there. So you will know like for this area, I need this number of people, I need this truck, now I need this. So the logistics will be there. And then um, on the side, we, we create teams, like we have teams to collect the plastics, the teams to collect the glass, the metals, you know, and the teams that, that will collect all those uh, residual, the landfill waste. And, and there's also like a compostable waste, but we said like, we'll just keep them on the ground anyway, they will be disappearing and they're not harmful. So you just leave it there or dig a hole and bury them as a natural uh, compost. So, so at least uh, with the cleanup, we minimize now the total transfer of, of cleanup waste or trash to the landfill. So I'm talking here with two things trash and waste. So trash are those dirty, useless, and they have to be in the landfill. And here in the Philippines, we don't have incineration, so we don't burn. Um, then the other is waste where they are a resource. Waste that can still be recycled or made into arts, you know. Um, here in one community island in Philippines, they collect those in the beach cleanup, the, broken glass and these broken glass with different color different shape they come up with a jewelry or beads so it it's it's a fashion the the arts to craft or arts to fashion mm -hmm. trash to fashion and there are plastics also that can be uh, re recycled or made into we're introducing here in the in our movement called eco bricks it's like pet bottles and the, the shredded or cut uh, single-use plastics and you fill them up in the bottle and it becomes like so hard that you can make Lego and a lot of this you can make into green space. So it's a matter of trapping those 
single-use plastic instead of throwing to the landfill. And then since plastic is like 100 years to be decomposed, you know, or so you just cover it with, with mud or soil and put is a green space or garden. And anytime you destroy it, uh, since you don't directly mix with cement, so you can still reuse it. So there's, we're conducting this training all over the country. So, so we also do ocean eco brick, whether it's wet, you can put them all together with two big bet bottles and like a capsule. And then, you know, instead of throwing them in the landfill, we longer the life expectancy of the landfill because it's so costly, you know, to do landfills. Yeah. Right. And last, and last is the Ocean Conservancy. They have this report. They called it data card. So at least in a community where you do a clean up, they tally like number of volunteer and there's a sample of what they had uh, retrieved and weight and number of pieces. So this is uh, a data card. So it becomes a an aid for policy or legislation for the community to know why, why there's so, so much waste of serene cigarette etc etc so you you understand the the trash and the habits of people and the disposal and then what you can do to prevent or do some policy etc so yeah so that's really important because you know they, there's that saying what you can't manage what you don't measure mm-hmm. and so if you're yeah whatever it is that you're finding that you're able to then go back and say hey, you know, it's plastic bottles or it's fishing nets or it's uh, cigarettes or whatever those things are so that you can then inform the, the policy uh, for all of that. And so, um, you know, that reminds me when you were talking about the data mapping or the waste mapping of um, the other summit speaker was uh, Joseph Kursky with Esri and they have story maps Mm-hmm. And that's something that that might work for this kind of thing. You can do a free story map. So for anybody that's out there that's looking for a mapping um, mm-hmm. tool, then the story maps from Esri, E-S-R-I, uh, could be another resource for this um, as you're going forward. Okay. And so, Dan, how, um, how can people get involved in this? And, well, the other thing I wanted to say real quick was I realized when you're talking about uh, the the Philippines and being uh, an archipelago that uh, that all the different coastline that you have is pretty amazing for for the number of people and so that all of us can be participating by doing the cleanup where we are because that is all going to end up on the coast maybe not even our own coast but it may end up you know as you said when the monsoons come the the trash that we don't take care of could end up on your on your beaches um but but yeah you have a lot of shoreline there um Mm. because of all those those islands and and so how can people get involved whether it's with the if they're in the philippines or anywhere in the world where would you direct them to to sign up and get more information Yes, uh, for for those um, interested volunteers, teams, or companies who haven't heard yet of uh, the International Coastal Cleanup Movement, um, I would recommend you either Google it, Ocean Conservancy, or go to their website, oceanconservancy.org, and there's a very informative uh, a report every year the the how many volunteers which country and what are the the uh, collected waste or trash that were uh, submitted in in those reports so it's very informative and and uh, you know it's not the straw that in each country they depicts the top ten uh, waste that were collected no? so from so it's very interesting to look at these uh, items and. And, and if you don't have to go to the ocean or to the waterways, if you're in the mountain, our campaign is where you are, as you've mentioned, is, is, is a part of the, here in the Philippines, we said National Cleanup Day. So when you say national, it becomes reef to ridge cleanup or uh, 
see to sum it clean up. And in our in our campaign here in the Philippines, we always have this scuba surero, like you go clean up underwater. So the divers, uh, since they love the corals and the fish, each dive is always a clean up dive. And September 21, the third Saturday of this month is their um, celebration. And they are united to go diving underwater and, and cleaning up the, the corals. And here in Cebu, we have problems on ghost nets. Now, if you're, in, if you're not familiar with ghost nets, these are nets that are industrial in fishing that it was just thrown away, whether intentionally or whether they fish and then it get off from the boat and they don't collect it or find it, you know. But what happened, it covered the coral uh, habitat. And when it covered, then the small fish and the corals will be dead and we lost those fishes. So there are groups here in, in Cebu, they call themselves the Sea Knights. You know? The Sea Knights and, and uh, weekly they take care of cleaning up the... Uh, coral area for diving and after cleanup you coral planting or coral coral uh, reforestation you now so there are different um, methods of doing it so that's the second level to to grow more of the corals so that's underwater but for the for the land the most important is Aside from clean up, we always we always say, I have some for the past five years. Our difficulty was to to talk to the local government, the mayor. You know, mayor, can we do a clean up? And they always say five years ago, no, we don't have a budget, so we, <laughs> we it's not part of the of the budget and it pales cost. But uh, for the last year, with the government's um, initiative and and looking at the cleaning up of our famous island, Burakai. So I encourage you, Joan, to, to make time to fly <laughs> here to the Philippines, and I'll show you around uh, our projects. Uh, and, and they clean up that Burakai island because basically, sad to say that the resource, they just, uh, it becomes an open sewage. No, so the, they don't process the water, waste water is just thrown to the, to the ocean. And, and now they, that model has been replicated and the government is pushing for clean ups, budget. So it's easy now for us to, to just join uh, clean up events that are organized by the local government, by the local community elected. So we just be there to, to help. And, and our goal now is the campaign on reduction of waste or zero waste. So we are now beyond the cleanup. But cleanup is important. The way that we ask ourselves, why do we take a bath every day? Why do we take a shower every day? You know, so why do we have to clean every day? <laughs> so we have to, to do that. But uh, as I said, uh, there's another uh, angle on, on the production side with the, with the companies on how they go to circular economy, which is another broad topic. But, but right. for this, for this um, session, I'm very uh, happy the team, the National Cleanup Day Coalition in the Philippines and our NGO and even the, our Department of Environment and Natural Resources, all the local government, because I'm now plugging in. So... Uh, Filipinos all over the country and all over the world. Uh, maybe it's it's about time also to to do collective action again. Every year we are taking the National Cleanup Day banner, but for other countries who have not had started this movement yet, you start small with your friends in the school or colleague. Go to a forest, go to a park. You know, pick up those litters. We know that there are workers who do that, but when they see groups, individual taking action, as you said, is a matter of engaging the community and then the discussion goes on and on the other areas. So Yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about that because you said that, uh, that following the cleanup day that often you'll have a summit. And so yeah. I think this is, this is really important, again, you know, for everybody listening to think about 
you know, you, you as someone that cares about this, you probably are, you already know the issues with, with waste and pesticides and all this stuff and how it travels, but, and, and you're concerned about it and you care, but a lot of people aren't starting there. And so if you, we need to start where people are. Mm -hmm. And, and this is another thing that if you're trying to reach out past your own, maybe, um, political party that mm -hmm. some of these concepts like cleaning up and beautifying are more broadly engaging than uh, like pollution prevention or some some other term that you might use so if you can start with that the the beautifying and then when people are actually touching the all this plastic and this waste and seeing it firsthand then they're naturally going to have the questions how can we prevent this and so let's talk about the the cleanup summit idea that that you would do to follow this aside from the cleanups so we are going to uh integrate the what's next you know so it's it's an avenue where we invite and showcase different uh, local government companies, uh, communities, and organizations who are doing positively and has a good example or benchmark where we can learn on, on the prevention side or recycling aspect, you know. So, so we have this uh, two-day summit, and it's now the fifth International Coastal Cleanup Summit, and it happens in my city. So for the past four years, it's in Luzon, in Subic. And Subic is one of the historical uh, also place in, in the Philippines because a lot of um, ships, Navy ships, are, are stationed there from the U.S., the naval base in Subic. And, and, uh, and uh, for the past four years, it happened there. So what I did was to integrate the cleanup and then the summit. So it becomes a dialogue and then come up with the videos and photos and reports of who are those groups uh, um, joining the cleanups and then discuss. And then the later part is we have the ECHO Festival, meaning we recognize partners, local government who are taking uh, this action on the, on the ground. So recognizing their efforts. And uh, here in the Philippines, we have young people who are elected in government officials, as a government official. So we will have another parallel track. We call them uh, Sangguniang Kabataan Empowerment Training. So Sangguniang is the youth elected uh, empowerment training, wherein mostly their project for young people are basketball, sports, pageant. So we, we teach them about environmental laws, and uh, threats so they can come up with a pitching and proposal of environmental project where they can implement within a year. So it's, it's like mentoring and crafting their own eco projects in their community led by young people elected. So that's uh, another new angle uh, that we incorporated in, in the summits. And, 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 and after the summits, since uh, we have uh, decided that the next uh, host will be another area, another region. So we're, we're plugging in that the next uh, sixth International Coastal Summit is in the region of Albay. It's the northern, it's in the north of Luz, it's in Luzon, but it's in the southern tip where you have the perfect cone of the volcano Mount Mayon, and it has a gulf, uh, a bay. So that will be the 2020 venue for the summit. So, so now we've, we've, we've incorporated you know, um, cleanups, and now the next summit is 2020 in September. So we have one year to help the next host to, to help the community, and campaign there. So we go to different region or islands all over the country. So that makes it more uh, local, but the campaign is global. We do the national, but we specific in each region and learn, you know, and connect each one in this uh, um, massive problem on 
marine or ocean litter or pollution in general. Yeah. That's so cool that you have youth elected officials. Yeah. That's, that's something that we keep hearing from the youth saying, you know, we can't vote, but you yeah. can. So, yeah. so why you need to be thinking about us and representing us with your vote, even if you don't care for yourself yeah. to, to make sure that you're, you're taking a stand. So that's really neat. So again, you know, for those of you that are out there wondering, what can I do to be learning from people that are so far ahead in this? So this idea, having a public cleanup day, following up with a summit that goes more into the issues, puts out some, um, gives some examples of like, okay, well, this city has a good policy or this company is doing something proactive in its, in its uh, production to, to get closer to that circular economy um, and then celebrating. So making it a celebration to encourage everybody and, uh, you know, rewarding, giving that positive attention to people that are doing good things and then training people of how to take it into their community and then moving this around the country. So all kinds of, of good things um, that you're doing there. And so what would you say, Dan, is an example of, of a company or a city or, or some, some success model that you would point to um, that would help people? Because, you, you know, these, these problems, they're so, a lot of people can give up hope, like, oh, we're not going to figure this out. You know, the, the amount of production plastic, it's just going up and, you know, plastic is everywhere. There's, there's nothing we can do. So what's an example of someone who has a, a company or a government that has some good policy um, that, that you can point to that shows, yeah, it is cost effective and people are really doing it. Oh yeah. So um, we hear uh, the context here in the Philippines or in, uh, city city is urban, then municipality is more uh, less population and less capital uh, gross in capital economic wise. So they they as I've traveled all over the country and even in different parts of the world, uh, there is no such thing as a perfect you know all in one city everything is doing perfectly. But but you will be surprised to find small niche of good uh, practices you know. Like uh, like sprouting like a mushroom that they are they are doing well. So in in the theme of a company or in terms of, for example, in specific one, I, I've been to an island called Camotes in near an island in Cebu, and they are espousing the idea of zero waste uh, coastal municipality, but now their problem is about the use napkins sanitary napkins and diapers so because they don't want to have a landfill but their plastics the residuals they have a shredder so those were shredded and then they saw what we're doing like putting them in pet bottles so they put that there and make into uh, benches in their parks so it becomes a the those pet bottles is like a instead of getting gravel or sand, it's a filling material. But as I said, you have to put less cement on it so you can demolish it and it will not be destroyed, you know. And then they come up with the crushed gra glass bottles and these crushed or pulverized glass bottles are mixed with cement and becomes a hollow blocks. And they are used in, in uh, walls or, or uh, simple uh, wall for housing, you know. So basically, they instead of just throwing them, um, they are putting emphasis on, on, on the area on reusing. Mm -hmm. And they asked me to do a training. So I'm coming up in that island in the last weekend because we will be training the women to weave, you know, weaving. And the material that we will use is paper magazines and plastics. So you can have a weaving instead of from the native uh, leaves, you will introduce the plastic material as 
wallet, bags, you know. And uh, today we're celebrating the Cebu Designers Week and one of our colleague, there's a lot of tarpaulin, tarpaulin materials uh, for advertisement. And we partner with a, with a mall, a supermarket or mall here in Cebu. And, and then they gave us the tarpaulin and then we look for women who makes it into a bag and then they made that out of a bag and then it's going to be sold in the supermarket so 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 that uh, it it goes back to to that area and then we improvise the design instead of simple bag we put the the cover with some designs and painting so instead of the cost is like two dollars it becomes like twenty dollars uh, different material into that simple tarp it becomes higher value so so that's that's what we have been doing on our little area on on tarpaulin on plastics on glass now um, companies now a lot of companies are talking to us like pharmaceutical products I told them you know it's not just you ask us to do a CSR but we want you to take a step of inventory of all your packaging and how you ensure that these are collected <laughs> and if you want we can pilot with some island or community that all your package we collect and then we put them to a proper junk shop for recycling whatever so i made them uh, think of their uh, production wa waste <laughs> yeah and you said a csr so a corporate sustainability reporting system I remember going to a talk where somebody was talking about the circular economy and they were saying like, you know, ideally would be, let's say you buy a TV mm. and then when it's done, when it's not working, you just bring it back yeah. and go, here's this thing. Because you didn't really want the TV, you wanted the ability to watch TV. And so when your ability to watch TV was no longer working, you just bring the thing back and go, okay, now you deal with it which would make so much sense because then they would be so much more motivated to make it deconstructable and reusable. Um, and I, I think this is the thing with doing the, the waste, the waste cleanup is always the first step because it alerts you to, to realizing all oh, this stuff doesn't go away. There's no throw away because they're still in planet earth. We're not throwing it somewhere. So it's just in our, in our backyard so the idea is really reduction of the waste or the trash and uh, as much as possible that the zero waste mentality like if you're not into zero waste then ask yourself how much waste will you generate each day and contribute to the landfill uh, compounding them and once it's filled up we have to find another place you know and and uh, it's a matter of respecting uh, nature, respecting creation, and uh, refuse is the most important thing as much as we can. Then we do the reduction of waste, the three R's, you know. And you mentioned about TV, the need to, I'm a technician, so I do repair. So cell phone here in the Philippines has to be fixed, you know, we don't have the luxury to buy, but we can fix it, you know. So there's even communities for sure in Denver that do a repair hub, you know. So so it's also good to to create that community and space of repair, making them last longer. And uh, there are many arts right right now that that the circular economy and and uh, rethink, you know, rethink on when you, you really want to buy, redesign your packaging. So, so, so there's a lot of ours right now. <laughs> <laughs> I like that it's, it's, it's so creative. And I think that's the part that once people get into realizing how creative these things are, like you gave the example of the bags. Mm -hmm. So, you know, somebody has a, a, Tarp, a tarpaulin sign out there that then ends up being material that's very strong and then someone can add their own painting and then sell it back as a bag. And um, I think that's the exciting part of the environmental movement that we don't talk about enough is that it is so creative um, because there, there are these 
habits, these ways of thinking that are so far from what nature has taught us, but nature shows us exactly how to do it. So once we come at it with that fresh perspective, um, then there's, like you're talking about on the, the island where they're rethinking every single piece. And yeah, the more that we can understand that we are all on this one big island together floating out in space, the more creative and uh, the more responsible we can be. And so with that, Dan, is there anything else that you wanted to, to sign off with? Um, I'll definitely be leaving the contact information uh, so that people can be thinking about what they would do. And the cool thing too is it comes right the day after the global climate strike and taking care of waste is a climate action. So when we dispose of our waste properly, like composting, if we compost it rather than burying it in the landfill, it has a positive impact rather than a negative impact. Um, so waste is definitely a, um, a climate action. But is there anything else that you would want to add before we sign off? Um Another big, big thanks to Joanne and the Green Team Academy. I know listening and subscribing to, to this uh, channel uh, could get us lights and inspiration as well as the feel of traveling to different countries that we are one planet and the culture, you know. And yeah, um, just one thing that clean up is a very simple thing to do, high impact. Uh, um, engagement and this is just a start and it's, it's good that you involve uh, the family the kids you know and uh, and September 20 we have a global we are participating also the um, global climate strike here in Cebu and the rest of uh, the Philippines on September 20 and it, it's a week long so when we do the climate strike at the end of the strike let's do our cleanups or prevent a lot of uh, waste trash that we contribute in the trash can. If we can bring only our bottled water and uh, fruits to eat and no things to throw in the trash, that's the, the best uh, uh, um, climate uh, action that we're going on the street because sometimes when there's a lot of crowd, it's always, uh, you know, trash problem. So, so as I said, uh, thank you once again and inviting the our NGO Sustainable Energy and Enterprise Development for Communities and in behalf of our national partner, the DNR, the local government all over the country and most especially to the volunteers who's been persistent and for five years now we're, we're moving, we're growing as a family of protecting and taking care of our planet and people. See you on the next uh, session maybe in the future so thank you very much joanne and the green team academy thank you so much dan and yeah it's always great as as you said you know just the fact that you and i can hop on here and chat together this does give that feeling of the connection that the water you know water is life water is this connection and being able to to talk about how what you're experiencing there and how what we're doing here all all um, impacts each other is a really good reminder. So mm -hmm. remember everybody that the time for action is now because there is no planet B. All right, see you soon. Thanks, Dan. Bye. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for another episode of the Green Team Academy podcast. Remember to check out all the resources to help you make a positive eco impact in your community at greenteamacademy.com. Thanks so much and see you right back here soon.